Okay, so my name is Jason Gavari, um, and today Stephen Folsom and I will be talking about Biblioteco, which is in many ways an implementation of BibFrame. So I'm really glad that we went um, following Nate and Ray. Um, the work today is um, part of the Linked Data for Libraries, Labs, and Linked Data for Production, Andrew W. Mellon Foundation funded projects which um, you had an introduction to this morning uh, by Regine, so thank you for saving us that effort. Um, but that really is, but more specifically, this is an effort of the ontology group, the joint ontology group within those two projects. So that is really to say that this work is the effort of significantly more people than Stephen, myself, and our co-presenter, Rebecca, or co-author, Rebecca. And um, way too many people to uh, name individually, but they represent six institutions, Columbia, Cornell, Harvard, Princeton, Stanford universities, as well as the Library of Congress. We're going to keep it fairly superficial because we are limited on time, so with that I will move forward. So what is Biblioteco? Biblioteco is a very simple um, model for representing bibliographic, uh, the bibliographic domain. The core concepts and models are based on BibFrame, uh, work instance item you can see in the diagram there. And building upon BibFrame is the Bibliotheco ontology itself, which in many ways supplements BibFrame with an extension, as well as in places replaces patterns in BibFrame um, in our attempt to demonstrate alternative modeling, which we'll talk about in a moment. On top of that, it are additional ontologies such as schema, DC terms, FOF, et cetera. Um, all of these are available at the biblioteco.org site. Um, all of these links are in the slides later and you can, you can find them uh, through there. Um, so if you wanna know exactly which terms we're using from which ontologies. Alongside of the ontologies are Shackle application profiles, which are in development currently, although there are some that are current, that are available in GitHub already, um, that define implementation of the use cases that we are trying to, to describe or to create data around within the projects, as well as mappings um, are also available within the GitHub repo, um, specifically currently the Bibco mark bibliographic standard record mapping to Biblioteco. So what is the purpose of this? Um, why did we bother creating yet another um, core model? This really began as an attempt for the ontology group to engage in assessment of BibFrame 2.0. Conveniently, these two projects began the same month as BibFrame 2 came out. And when we said, okay, we're gonna use BibFrame in these projects, we started by saying, we don't actually know what's in BibFrame because we knew BibFrame 1 pretty well and now BibFrame 2 and we have no idea what they changed and we have to assess. And in doing so, that assessment sort of took on a life of its own. Um, it, went, it was evaluation um, and engagement because we believe that as, as people who are going to use these models, we need to deeply engage with them. And it was also an attempt to, to um, look towards extension of BibFrame itself. We went further to deviate from BibFrame and demonstrate these alternative patterns with the goal of trying to identify whether or not there are other ways to go about creating our data that could be more queryable, could be more, uh, more useful for us. Um, the verdict is out on some of those um, because we haven't tested yet. Um, but the idea here is that we are not in any way creating a competitor to BibFrame. We are simply show, demonstrating these alternative patterns so that they can be assessed by the community um, such as yourselves, um, and also by Library of Congress, um, who are the obviously the, Bib, the BibFrame developers, to be to be determined whether or not some of them could be folded into future iterations of BibFrame, future versions of BibFrame, and all of this, um, all of this alongside trying to assess whether or not we can we can uh, accept our legacy data and bring it into a real world orientation alongside creating new data. Now, future plans for, 
for Biblioteco are actually frozen. Uh, we are not continuing development of this model, and in fact, not even all of the six institutions who have created this model are using the model. Um, the goal here, again, really is assessment and evaluation to demonstrate alternatives. Um, we defined a rather robust change management process available in the GitHub uh, repo. Um, and have a ton of work that we identified but never completed because of time constraints. Um, but we believe that we did succeed in our goal of assessment. Um, so we are very proud of that. Um, and we also really want to engage with the community around this. We want issues on GitHub. We want, we want people to, to say this is great or terrible. Why did you do this? We really like the latter, um, particularly. So there's plenty of places to get documentation, perhaps a few too many, um, but there are many. Uh, there's there's biblioteco.org, there is a wiki for this, as well as a GitHub repo. Uh, we try to cross-link as much as possible. But between these, these spaces, there is there's actually plenty of rich documentation so that the, um, the community who wishes to either implement or, or analyze has the tools to do so. Um, there are OWL files, Shackle application profiles, mapping spreadsheets, nar uh, narrative pattern descriptions, and diagrams. And speaking of pattern descriptions, um, there, these are, in a way, a, a rather at times very lengthy um, analysis of what exactly is within the, mo the pattern itself. These, uh, these, um, these merge modeling and implementation to demonstrate diagrams of how we believe the pattern should be profiled, what exactly should be, uh, what kinds of data should be produced through this. Um, and the, the patterns that were created where the um, bib frame patterns are either supplemented or, or replaced um, follow a few principles. And in discussing three of these patterns in a minute, we'll, we'll outline which principles um, sort of align with which. Um, those in general being reuse and alignment with existing vocabularies and ontologies. Um, and also inversely for anything that we do mint ourselves, doing so broadly enough that we encourage reuse by others. Um, trying to use OWL axioms in moderation so that we do not over constrain the ontology itself. Um, preferring object properties and structured data over um, unstructured literals in not worrying so much about and not being mired in our legacy data um, in hopes that one day we will have more future data created natively in these, in these models. And so we're going to focus on three patterns. I'll take the first then, and then kick it over to Stephen. Um, the first being activities. Um, the, the principles that this aligns with are preferring the simplest and most general model um, capable of, of faithfully representing the data. Um, and the second being um, using OWL constructs in moderation. So for a just very two second primer, within, um, within the bib frame model, activities in a way are divided between provisions and contributions with provisions being only on the instance level um, and contributions I thought were only on the work level, but apparently they're now work instance or item used with, or it says it in the, um, um, it, it says it uh, last time I checked at least. Um, and we feel that this is unnecessary complication in that the two, the two profile the same, the two have the same kind of, con it's the same concept. We saw the semantics as being, as being at least, um, as being at least having, having a super class there that would, that would allow for it. Um, and also, on the other hand, BibFrame also uses BF role to define the agent's interaction with the resource. In Biblioteco, um, there is a single pattern uh, for representing activities, whether they be in the BibFrame mode, um, provisions or contributions. And that activity uses subclassing um, as the inherent way of identifying how the agent is related to that activity or that, that resource. The significant features uh, that we feel that this model changes, or at least aligns with, are that there, it's a consistent model across the board for activities on a resource. There is a superclass and a, a, a shared superclass and a shared property for all types of activities. Um, and there aren't any formal constraints about which type of, of BF um, core class that something aligns with. So the, the, um, the bibliographic resource is not is not specified as being this activity is only related 
to a BF instance, for instance. And um, I think that's all I'm going to say about activities. And with that, I'll pass it over to Stephen. Okay, so jumping into the next pattern, um, uh, BibFrame uses two distinct patterns for capturing content carrier and media type. So if you're familiar at all with uh, RDA, uh, these concepts are sort of an embodiment of an implementation of RDA. And so uh, what you see here is um, you see two types of arcs. You see RDF type, and you also see content carrier and media. And, and so really what you is surfaces um, multiple query paths that you then have to uh, take into account in your applications. Um, and, and so there, there's the subclassing of, of works instance items, and then um, linking also to content carrier and media resources that, that essentially captures the same, if not or similar, if not the same ideas. So uh, at, least, at least in the lifetime of this grant, we're proposing that uh, uh, we commit to um, subclasses. And, and so this, this is sort of like what, uh, what Valentin was saying with their schema.org extensions. So schema has creative work. And then the types of resources can be extended through, through subclassing. And so um, RDF type, everybody knows, is a pretty ubiquitous property. Systems know how to use it. Um, it's a, it's a um, fairly safe way to to uh, implement and extend in BibFrame. Um, and I, it, the other thing to point out here, or a couple of things to point out here, um, uh, an alternative model would be to not ignore uh, these content carrier and media vocabularies that are often SCOS vocabularies. <laughs> but even with that, um, we don't necessarily need a different property per resource. So um, CDOC CRM has a P2 where you can uh, classify resources and, and use a, a single property to say this entity has this type, but we're not li actually linking to a class. We're linking to a, a SCOS concept. It gets around that sort of punning um, question. Um, the other thing to point out here is that we haven't extended media type. Um, uh, and we're, we're trying to push the boundaries here on, on instances so that we say we define instances and we extend instances in such a way that in their definition is this idea that, uh, of, of what it takes to play back. So the bib online resource here um, is a subclass of electronic. And electronic in its definition says um, requires a computer for playback. So having another pattern that says, um, here's a, a media property and computer off from the resource, um, it, it, it's, we're, we're really striving for some simplicity there. Um, so moving on, maybe a, a harder pattern to describe um, is the relations document. Um, I'm only going to touch on this in Surface. There's, a, as Jason said, a, a document that goes in, in much more detail. But in this case, we, we decided that, um, so for some of the properties that Ray was talking about with expression of and, and related to and the sub-properties, um, they're, they're, they reach a limit. Like they, They've held themselves to being a framework and, and ask that you extend. And so this is sort of an approach to extending um, sort of the core uh, uh, relationships between um, principal or primary entities in, in, in bib frames. So uh, an example of this would be the derivative work. So there's a, a pretty deep hierarchy of derivative works in RDAU, and we're suggesting to use that. And I'll acknowledge Osma here and say, yes, the, the, the opaque URIs are a pain, um, but we'd rather not mint them ourselves. Um, some other motivations behind this, or another motiva motivation behind this, was that we felt that we wouldn't have to train catalogers necessarily. I mean, they're getting a lot of RDA training, so hopefully um, they'll recognize some of these terms. And the other is the RDA U properties, if you don't know. RDA unconstrained has open domains and ranges. So RDA wants to use the, the Ferber stack, um, work expression manifestation and item. And this lets us get around that um, in the way that BibFrame uh, strives to do. Um, so some of our more uh, recent work is trying to understand with the definitions that we, or the properties that we've chosen to use, how do we use those in, in this sort of bibliotechal environment? So we've um, identified properties like DC terms description, and, and the domain is open, and we want to build these applications that uh, that use the properties that we've identified in, in deliberate ways. And the ontologies themselves uh, don't uh, 
aren't enough to build an application. You have to specify how you're going to use each of these properties. And um, Huda Khan in the audience has great presentations of, of, about um, ontology to app. And I'd recommend uh, going out and looking at those. Um, and so with, with Shackle, um, the shapes constraint um, uh, recommendation out of W3C. There's lots of ways that it can be used. A lot of people are considering it a, a validation um, language. Um, we were happy to find uh, axioms in, in the model that allow, um, allow for uh, uh, form building. So, um, and really, uh, as the Princeton folks pointed out, we got really far behind and bogged down in uh, modeling. So we got behind in um, building an application that would let catalogers catalog. And so this is our way to, um, a, a, a standard way to define what the, the cataloging tools would use. Um, examples of this you can find in the repository, the most mature being the hip hop repository. Um, and uh, really this is coming from a very content specific um, set of decisions. So for audio works, what properties and classes do we want in that form so that you don't have all of BibFrame and you don't have all of the other extensions in a, in a big, heavy, heavyweight editor. So really trying to tune it for a content type and moving images um, coming along. And one of our goals is to have it for any project that wants to use VitroLib, which is um, the editor that we're building um, to define some shackles so that we can transform the shackle into what the editor needs. Um, uh, and so uh, I'm going to leave this out. I'll just use this slide as a plug for a breakout session um, because we don't have necessarily the time to go into it. But um, I'm really interested in the semantics of form building and what Shackle can do versus what it um, isn't able to do. And, and But um, we know that there are certain semantics in form building that we have in JSON configuration files and, and elsewhere. So there's a lot of experience in the room around um, building forms. So I would, I'd love to have a conversation about um, a standards-based way of doing that. And given that Shackle is RDF-based, RDF um, we can have URIs and, and share shapes and share um, some of these definitions so that across applications, um, we don't have to recreate um, some form building. So leaving question for or leaving time for questions. Um, uh, uh, really, we, we do hope that people will engage with our work, um, and and either here at the conference or online. Um, uh, as Jason said, there's lots of opportunities. Um, please um, comment publicly. Um, it's sure we'll have a side conversation, but the more that this this stuff can be out in the open, um, I think the more useful it is. Um, and if you have your own assessments, I know we're not the only groups um, looking at BibFrame and, and trying to make these sort of evaluate, evaluations. We'd, we'd love to hear from you. Um, and lastly, um, though Biblioteco isn't um, going to progress as, as something that we maintain into the future, we're really interested both with uh, our engagement with BibFrame and, and other ontologies, um, your experience about building um, community-based open process for for communicating and maintaining ontologies. So, thank you. So thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, do we have any questions or comments from the audience? We have time. Come on. OK, there's one. Hi, my name is Christina. I'm from the Danish Library Center. I, I was just wondering, actually, what what your motiv motivation behind this was. Was it like you saw some data that wasn't really well represented in BibFrame, or was it you mentioned something in the beginning about making it more searchable, or was it um, yeah, what was your motivation for this? Was it presenting it in a user interface? Then this doesn't make sense in BibFrame. Uh, what were your thoughts about this? I think it would depend on the the pattern itself or the fragment that we were that we were concerned with. Um, I can't offhand think of an individual instance where it was like this was about querying and this was about um, this was about display or something like that. But overall, it was a sense that as we were go because our assessment was going 
class by class, property by property through it very, it's, it's easy to, um, especially when you have um, 20 people in the room, uh, sort of suddenly say, oh, we really wish it was doing this instead of that. And we really w wanted it to be, um, to be simpler in this one area or more complex in this other or whatever the case might be. Um, and we, it, it took a life of its own prior to us really having a, a, um, a mode of operation in that way. Like we weren't necessarily, we, were, we wasn't thought of as being a massive undertaking a whole framework before when we began the project. It was really just a, let's document some questions that we have and some issues we have. Okay. Thank you once more.